All right, we're here. Free soloing a skyscraper. When I climb a building, my anxiety just goes away. If I start to panic or something like this, it's the end. My name is Alex Silando. I am 22 years old. I would say there are probably five people that do what we do on Earth if we talk about urban free solo. When I started, nobody else was free soloing Berlings. There is a new generation of climbers following in my footsteps. Once we're up there, it's a matter of life and death. I don't know why, but at this moment in my life, I felt like I needed to go anywhere I wanted to go, you know. This is maybe something that a lot of teenagers feel too, but I really needed freedom of movement. And this was a day that my life would probably change forever. Right now, I'm about to complete my hardest challenge yet, which is the Mercurial Tower. The handholds are so small. Fuck, my strap is gone on my pinky. I know I am putting my family through hell with what I do. Maybe I die young, but on the other hand, if I don't even try, it's already failing. My life has already like no value if I don't even try. I don't have a choice. The only way is to the top. I've been training for this for over six months now. Tomorrow is the big climb, so it's all in my head now. This is my simulator. It's a replica of a building window that I built during the pandemic. This is really similar to what I'm about to climb on Saturday. I've trained for this here and on the tower itself, but security were kicking me out. You want me to do a little demo? I don't have my climbing shoes, but I don't need them to show you. I'm just gonna put a little bit of strap and we're good. Sometimes the metal can be really sharp. The metal would easily cut my fingers if I didn't have this. I would not be able to climb one window without those. Actually, that's not true, but I, won't, I would not be able to climb five windows without those. And to be honest, I haven't trained on the tower in like two months. So it makes me a little bit nervous, but at the same time, I have to keep in mind that I'm climbing for like 15 years now. So I am trained for this. Climbing with regular shoes is horrible. <laughs> Every time I go back here and train, I feel so nostalgic because this for me represents an era, you know, a time. The only thing I wanted was to climb the Montparnasse Tower. Ever since I'm tall enough to walk, I've been trying to climb. It's like pretty much my DNA, you know. So when I was really like a young kid, my dad and mom, you know, they used to like watch me all the time because I was trying to climb everywhere. So, you know, my dad, he was like, all right, this is enough. I'm gonna bring you to the climbing gym. And from now on, you climb only the gym. And I never left Entreblock ever since. When I was growing up, I always felt, I would say left out, not left out, but different. Same nowadays, I really have a hard time to fit in, you know, groups of people because, you know, I, I, I don't know what to share with them. I don't watch sports on TV, I don't watch TV at all, I don't do the same things. So I, I've always have big troubles speaking to other people, except when it comes to other climbers or other parkour at least. So the people I know in Entreblock are probably like the people I've known for the longest period now, because I've been climbing this place for like 15 years without ever stopping. So. It's more than a second home, it's like my main home, you know. I've always been like passionate about the urban landscape because, you know, this is where I was born. I was not born in the countryside, I was born here in the middle of the city, in Paris. So there's like so much to explore, so much to, to see, you know. And there's beauty in those modern architecture in a way. 
And when I tried parkour for the first time, like four years ago, I realized like this urban environment, like it's so beautiful. I really feel like I can do whatever I want in the city, basically. I can climb buildings, I can jump from a roof to another. It really makes me feel powerful and also really free. At this moment in my life, I don't know why, but I felt like I needed to go anywhere I wanted to go, you know. The freedom of movement that you have, you can go anywhere if you're good at parkour, you know. This is maybe something that a lot of teenagers feel too, but I really needed this freedom of movement. And the more I was falling in love with the sport, the more I was thinking, you know, but maybe I can do more than just parkour. Maybe I can climb, you know. Maybe I can use those vertical mountains that modern landscape gives us. And quickly after, I heard about Alain Robert, and I was like, wow, this exists in real life. It was mind-blowing. Construction workers cheered, and crowds gathered on the streets to watch a daredevil scale the New York Times building. He calls himself Spider-Man. Elaine Robert climbs tall things. Today, in total, uh, I have climbed 170 uh, different buildings. I am uh, Alain Robert. Uh, I am from France, uh, already uh, 60 years old. And uh, I live now in Bali for almost uh, 10 years. Actually, I became famous after free soloing uh, hard grades on rocks. So I'm talking about 31 years ago when I did climb uh, free solo, uh, the hardest foot in the whole world. I would say that uh, Alex uh, Honnold or Alexander Huber, they are the guys who have really recognized uh, what I have done uh, 31 years ago. He's free solo at harder grades than I ever have. You know, I mean, and, and that was a long time ago when those were really close to the cutting edge. Basically, he was only a few grades away from, from the hardest that anybody could do with a rope. And so the idea that he was climbing some of the hardest things in the world without a rope seemed totally outrageous. But, you know, I became famous not because uh, I have climbed uh, hard grades on rocks. I became famous because uh, I started climbing buildings. People are calling me a French uh, Spider-Man. I actually got that name uh, from the American uh, medias when I first climbed in uh, Chicago in 1994. I could tell you that uh, I share uh, the same kind of uh, philosophy as the, the Spider-Man. When I started, I think nobody else was free soloing Berlings. And now there is a new generation of uh, climbers that are following in my uh, footsteps. And at the moment, I would say that Alexi Lando uh, is, is the most uh, promising uh, one. So the first building that I ever climbed was like the building of my dreams. When I was a kid, I was like 10 years old. And from my mom's house, I was able to see a building through the windows but I was only able to see the top of the building because I was so small. And every year I could see more and more of the building because I was growing up. And all those years, my mom told me, you know, don't, don't do it, don't climb this, you know. I was just a little kid, but she already knew that I had this in me. At some point in my life, I just could not resist to climb it. I was 18 and this was a day that my life would probably change forever. was really easy, you know. Big holes, it still required some climbing moves, but I had a level of climbing that allowed me to feel really safe on this one. So I remember that I was not on the top yet, that I was already telling myself, okay, I need to find another climb because this was too easy. I'm so happy I did this, but I was actually happier to find out that this is what I truly love and I need to find something harder. I just started climbing more difficult buildings. I started thinking about what other challenges can I overcome. So after the NG Tower, I was thinking in my head, okay, let's go for Aryan Tower. And after Aryan Tower, I said, okay, let's go for Montparnasse Tower. 
and this is what I still do. I keep finding new challenges. The problem that the new uh, generation now they are encountering, it's the, it's the quantity. Every day there is uh, millions of uh, new uh, videos that are more, more amazing uh, from one uh, to another. And you need to do uh, what you do for the right reason. If it is to become uh, famous, and you would never ever climb if uh, there wasn't cameras, uh, GoPros uh, and drones, then you are absolutely on the wrong track. I am somebody who is really anxious. You know, it's my nature. When I'm climbing, my anxiety just goes away because I, I can't be anxious, you know? If I start to panic or something like this, it's the end, you know? This is what I love also with what I do is that once I start, the only way is to the top. I want to do this for as long as I'm capable of doing this, find harder challenges and also interesting climbs, you know, like technically interesting climbs. And right now I'm about to, you know, complete my hardest challenge yet, which is the Mercurial Tower. We are next to the Mercurial Tower. It actually helps me to scout the day before because I can visualize myself climbing on it. I'm so stressed and excited at the same time, but it's normal. The fact that I'm stressed means that everything's working correctly, so... This is technically my hardest challenge yet. The handholds are so small. I can basically put like half a centimeter uh, of finger per hand to climb. The Mercury Tower have a little bit bigger than this for the feet, but way smaller than this. And the foot placements are much worse. And the movements I have to make is more technical than what I'm used to do. But I know I can do it, I've trained for this. Tomorrow I will climb the route on the right, stay on the right lane, because the other lanes, they are not solid, you know. The holes, they move. So of course, there's always a chance that, you know, I might grab hand hold and it doesn't hold well or it's fragile you know but that's you know luck also but they shouldn't be because i checked as much as i could the structure and everything seems to be strong so there should be no problem we can't stay here too long though because security is gonna come for us so we gotta move i called a friend and he's gonna bring a bunch of parkour, urban exploration, people. Everybody knows each other in this kind of little, you know, like uh, environment of parkour, urban exploration. Yeah. So yeah, it's a whole other aspect of my life, you know. And of course, I'm stressed about Saturday, but you know, hanging out with friends is always good to, you know, relax, think about something else, and tease my head before the big climb. I, I'm, I'm expecting some people that I haven't seen in like two or three years, so yeah. A few of the people that I'm hanging out with are like the first people I've ever trained parkour with. They like teach me, you know, like all those basics of parkour. They're both parkour athletes and explorers, you know. It's like a little community of people who, you know, hang out on the roof, train parkour on parkour spots, have fun, just hang out, stuff like this. This is the more fun and goofy aspect of my life, which is urban exploring like this, because I don't do this often. It's not my passion, but I enjoy urban landscape because I train on it, I climb on it. I might as well, you know, explore and have fun with friends too. You know? It's all part of a, like a lifestyle. Ah oui, ok. Putain, mais gros, t'es un ouf. Right now, we're in La Défense, which is the business district. I really love this atmosphere. It inspires me to climb. Like this building right now, the total tower. It's absolutely beautiful from this point of view. C'est que je revienne. On va, on va se casser. Reviens de ce son, ce côté-là. Attends, c'est où qu'il a grimpé à l'un Je vais te montrer, attends. C'est où qu'il a grimpé C'est peut-être là, ouais. Voilà. This is Arriva Tower. 
Alain Robert climbed it 20 years ago, if I remember correctly. So it's a crack climbing style. You put your hands like this, like this, and you go up like this. On est d'accord que Alain qui grimpe à Toareva, c'est au moins un des meilleurs sols du monde. Ah mais je pense. Peut-être même ouais. le peut-être le best. But doing this on 200 meters is absolutely nuts. Uh, ils ont mis ça après ma grimpe ou après celle de Léo, je sais plus trop. Ouais. It's not technically illegal in France because there's no law about it. It's illegal in Spain, for example, and you get a ticket for it. But in France, there's no law about climbing buildings, so they don't know what to do with dust. But I get arrested pretty much every time I climb a building. Sometimes I am arrested by the cops, ending up in jail, maybe having to pay a hefty fine and going to court and being uh, treated like a criminal. I'm still having a, a pending case in Hong Kong, but cops, you know, there is the good cops and there is the bad one. And some of them, they are just treating me like, uh, like a piece of shit. I couldn't believe it myself, the, the violence that there is in some uh, cops. Maybe they are frustrated because their dick is too small and uh, others, they are really, really nice. They are friends, actually. We are in touch. Sometimes we are eating together. We are we are drinking champagne. On my first climbs, I was always handcuffed. But now they start to know me, so I usually don't have much problems. The police is always really nice with me. We often like take selfies and stuff because you know they think it's cool too. You know, maybe one day I'll get a big fine and regret. But no, I won't regret. Et dis-toi qu'après, le, le truc se resserre, t'as plus la place de mettre les pieds, quoi. C'est ouf, quand même, hein Et à la fin, t'as carrément plus la place. Si tu regardes la vidéo d'Alain, il est comme si... Il n'arrive pas à mettre ses pieds dans la fissure. There is a whole new uh, generation uh, trying to follow me and uh, they are inspired. This is one of the best uh, compliments that I can receive. People, they are asking, are you not afraid that you may feel uh, responsible because uh, they may fall and they may die trying to follow you uh, on your uh, footstep. But I don't feel uh, responsible. I know I will feel something, but I've never said that actually there was no risk. O overall, we are having the choice. There is uh, no guarantee uh, for every one of us. So just live your life and be careful and be sure that you are following me for the right reason. My biggest fear is losing anybody that I love in a car accident or from cancer. This is what scares me in life, the thing that I cannot control. This is why, on some level, I think I, I climb. I'm the only one who has power, who has control over my life. I can see death coming when I climb a skyscraper. And I can do something about it. I'm in control of what's happening. I know I am putting my family through hell with what I do because they are scared for me all the time. They are trusting me more and more every time because they see that it goes well. But if I fall, I would feel so guilty for putting my girlfriend through hell. I would feel terrible. Je peux toujours envoyer un message. Ça marche. De toute façon, je te tiens en courant par message. Je te tiens en courant quand je commence la grimpe. Si jamais tu es là pour regarder la grimpe, c'est toi qui vas. Je veux juste pas louper le début. Ok, pourquoi Je sais pas, je sais pas, c'est le moment où il y a le plus de choses qui se jouent, donc... Euh... Ok. Ah, c'est le moment le plus stressant pour moi. Une fois que t'es dedans, tu vois, t'es dedans, je suis dedans. Euh... Mais le début vraiment se lancer, c'est là que je ne sais pas. Ce qui m'inquiète le plus, c'est presque la mise en place, plutôt que la grimpe en elle-même. Ouais, non, mais là, mais là faut médias, pas que ça te prenne ouais. la tête. Hein. Faut ouais. vraiment que tu te focuses sur la grimpe et les médias, euh, ça passe après, quoi. Mmh. Par contre, je t'aime. Mais si, Maybe I die young, traumatize my family. But on the other hand, if I don't even try, it's already failing. My life has already like no value if I don't even try. 
years ago, when I was in front of my desk, I was having panic attack. But I don't have those panic attacks when I'm, you know, 200 meters high, climbing a building. So the only thing I can do is trying, fighting for my life, and always make sure I don't fall. This is how I see it, you know. What is the point of living if, if I don't even try, you know? Let's go for a desk job. You know? Let's go for something that I was not born to do and just die without living. When I start to climb, I know I'm going to succeed. I know I'm going to live. I get perfect focus. It's like a dance choreography. Everything has to go as planned. Every move is perfectly executed. This is what makes me stay alive, you know? Look how small the handholds are. I can barely fit my hands. A little bit, but I feel relatively serene because he's super trained for that. I don't have any problems. I know what he's capable of. I know. Fuck, my strap is gone. On my peak, I feel like I'm Fuck, my strap is gone. On my pinky. Of course, if I fall, the consequences are horrible. But once you're up there, 200 meters, no security, no rope, you don't have a choice but to list your logical mind and just keep going. Keep going until you reach the top. I don't do what I do for other people. I've climbed buildings where nobody sees me climbing. I do this because I love to do this. But I like the idea that some people are just walking down the streets they look up and they see me climbing a building, no protection. There's something like almost artistic to it, you know, almost funny. All right, I'm almost finished. I got eight floors left to do. When you are climbing, you know, without any uh, equipment, there is always uh, a risk. But let's say that the first second uh, you're born, you are condemned to die, so... You better choose, you know, which way uh, you're gonna live your life and trying to enjoy it uh, as much as you can instead of uh, being a coward and uh, keeping your dreams uh, on your mind and doing something that uh, you don't even like. I have accepted a risk. If I wanted to play the hard game, I had to be willing uh, to lose it all. I hope that I made Anna Robert proud our mentor, and you know, now I just gotta look for a new challenge. Woo! Wow, I climbed that. Well, I deserve that view. <laughs> this beautiful view of Paris.